Hello, and welcome to a new episode of The Other Rush. And today, I'm going to talk to you about feedback and its importance for business and people. Well, I mean, the people, business doesn't give a shit about feedback, although it is critical for business to have feedback as uh, one of the core principles of the operations, pretty much, because without it, you're not going to last long. People would burn out and eventually they'll leave. So yeah, uh, before digging into, throw some hooks here and there just to make sure that there is some watching time here or listening time, that depends, because I'm experimenting with the podcast. We'll see where it leads so far. Not that fruitful, but yeah, I mean, I'm a social person, I guess. No connections in the social world. Not many people to whom I can send this link and tell them, mm, dude, free, check this out and freak out or, you know, whatever. So yeah, uh, Hooks, I uh, started the education on psychedelics at Berkeley. I'm going to unveil some of the information that I got so far at the very end. And I'll share some of the tips about how to let people go, especially when you are in a remote environment such as my business so yeah let's dig in um there is a company i'm not sure whether or not it is attributed to that particular one big fmcg player who has this phrase come on in their corporate culture feedback is a gift well i heard it from some people i don't know whether or not it's real uh but yeah i guess you can google and find that information yourself but yeah the idea here is to give it big and get feedback and this is a very hard art to nail and it requires a lot of skill knowledge and a lot of personal um will i guess or you know being prepared to face this discomfort uh because it will be there feedback is pretty much uncomfortable however you put it even if it's good feedback well you know, if you say somebody somebody did a good job, it's not a feedback. <laughs> Let's be honest here. It's a piece of shit. So what is feedback? In fact, it helps you and the other person to kind of communicate properly and uh, make sure that the other person understands your perception around his or her competencies, capabilities. And the rest is, you know... Probably not going to dig into the personal aspect since it's business related. But then again, in personal life, feedback is also important, especially when you are married, for instance. So, yeah, me and my wife, we give each other feedback from time to time. Well, in some cases, it becomes a, a reason for us to quarrel and, uh, you know, argue. But yeah, in other cases, we do share feedback with each other about uh, how we want or don't want to you know, do something about ourselves. Like, I don't know, in sex, for instance, we tell each other what we don't like or what we do like so that it then helps both of us to not only improve our, um, I don't know, what's the proper word here? Like level of satisfaction maybe of each other or sex or in general. So yeah, all of a sudden from business uh, going to sex, right? But yeah, I mean, this is what this podcast is all about. The weird Russian guy just uh, talks a lot of strange stuff on the go. But yeah, feedback is important there as well, because how else would you know that your partner is uh, indeed receiving the pleasure that you think your partner is receiving without it, right? So you can assume you can make a judgment call you may have your own perception and idea of uh, whether or not you know you are delivering pleasure or not but then feedback is fucking critical if there's no feedback how else are you gonna know same for business pretty much yeah um the reason i decided to touch this topic today is that because today i had to let go a person who was hired by well me basically and yeah three months passed the probation period uh, finished and then uh, we had to have this conversation of uh, three months so yeah the problem here for me and for that particular case i'm not gonna go into like uh, exact details revealing but throughout the conversation and yeah in the end probably i'm gonna say how i started this conversation because it's always hard to you know initiate a I talk around the topic when somebody is being let go right i mean if you have ever had to tell this to a person you know what it feels like if you haven't ever done this it's it feels shitty i mean even though there are cases when people obviously just don't deliver 
and you need to let them go, it just feels shitty. I mean, we're all human beings, right? So it's hard to say that there is a person in reality that enjoys firing people. There was this movie, by the way, with uh, um, Kevin, not Kevin Spacey, George Clooney, right? Up in the sky or something like that. So yeah, he was just, you know, being this corporate cog uh, being hired for specifically hiring, well, firing people, not hiring, firing. So he was just traveling all over the place in the U.S. and, you know, going to a company and tell to a certain number of employees that they're being let go. So, you yeah, know, you could see that it's not an easy job to do. Of course, it requires skill and technique and it'll get easier over time. But if I can takes time, if I can takes effort, if I can takes this amount of discomfort to face it, and it all goes back to that concept of discomfort and probably I should talk about it at some of the episodes. I'm just making a note here. So discomfort as a topic is very broad and it affects everything that we do. And I think I've touched it in episode uh, 22, the discomfort that I've uh, experienced when I had to communicate with my wife and uh, tell her that, yeah, I was wrong. So it also happens in the negotiation process and other areas of our life, of course, and I can dig into there because I had an additional fruitful conversation with another team member today during a, a monthly check-in um, about the topic of the negotiation and, again, the discomfort that is uh, happening there. But it also manifests not only there during the presentation, so whenever you are delivering. And probably there is another topic that I can talk about. So, yeah, I'm, I'm still, you know, finding in, not a niche, but my kind of direction here because i definitely love to talk about psychedelics and i love to talk about the entrepreneurship journey and probably i'm going to continue doing that as well but yeah i mean i went to um G chat gpt and uh, i even spoke with a friend of mine who did birthday a couple of days ago about uh his experience of the uh, youtube channel damn i'm gonna talk, put that in the very end because this is a story that you know he's it requires attention requires detail because the uh, the advices that he gave me like go in 100% contradiction with uh, what I've been doing so far in terms of the content, in terms of the project that I'm involved in, like uh, Shtri Shakti, for instance. So yeah, he is like completely in line with the patriarchal society. But yeah, that's uh, just uh, noted and I'll get back to the hopefully I won't fuck it up. So yeah, going back to the discomfort, it's there, it's going to be there at any point in time and especially in feedback. So when you need to convey feedback, you need to tell something to a person that is not necessarily 100% all good. So you definitely may need to, <laughs> definitely may need to. But yeah, I, I guess there is a point in time when you need to say to a person that he or she did something not in line with your or company's expectations or goals or whatever, and it is a hard thing to do. It is harder to do face-to-face. -face. It is easier to do over a conversation via video call, even easier over a phone. Well, for some people, may not be, but even, well, texts, I wouldn't advise anybody let go of somebody using a fucking text. I mean, this is like fucking irresponsible behavior there and just, you know, completed, I don't know, what's the word here, but like disrespect just you know spend some fucking five minutes at least and say to the person so that he or she knows about it from you not from the text that they receive in message or something like that so yeah today i had a call it was like one hour long originally so at the beginning i said that me and my colleague here well actually it was a three-way call because i am a managing director so the person that was being let go is a person from the product department but unfortunately my business partner head of strategy is fucking busy delivering a education at the um, executive mba at skolkova business school so yeah i mean i had to do it by myself and with a colleague of mine because she's been the one helping with the onboarding process and the educational journey of uh, the person that i need to let go so i at the very beginning i, I said that we have one hour and we are here to dedicate the entire hour to you. But yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I'm just looking at the note that I made and probably, yeah, let's release it well, one, one at a time. So why I decided to get, dig into here? Because um, that particular call was designed to, again, originally not only to let person go, but also to give feedback and solicit feedback, actually. So what I did at the very beginning that I introduced the topic that we're here to discuss the results of the three month probation period, etc. And I respect you. That's why I will not take 20 minutes to tell you whether or not we decided to stay with you, let it go. That's why I'm saying you right here, right now, we are letting you go. Actually, the phrase was a bit different. I said, we are, ah, uh, shit, what was it? It was like something like we are not continuing the collaboration with you. Or, you know, something like that. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, the idea there was not to say to the person that, you know, the person was fired or being let go. The phrase probably, some might say it is be vague, but the idea there was to say that we are not planning to continue working with you. Which is, in my view, a bit softer version of words like you're fired or we don't want to work with you or something like that so a bit soft at the beginning but then again without putting a band-aid to it or a stake in between i decided to start with it and then continue that we're here and the rest of the 60 well 58 minutes till the end of this call are here to make sure that we convey the feedback we answer your question and tell you and explicitly why we came to this decision so of course it is a, a tough start of a conversation i had to let go people before and it was a different manner and so far i find this well it's just one case but still you know it's more humane in my view because again you don't sugarcoat it you say it right away in a maybe softer manner, but then you are connecting with the person. You're trying to make sure that, yes, you do care about the feelings of that person. You don't want to just drop the bomb and that's it. So this is important. We're all humans and we need to treat each other as humans. So I mean, I mean we all re re at least deserve this, all right? So then we continued the conversation and there was a lot of words said about the feedback and uh, then and there realized that we as a company are not there, definitely. So in terms of feedback that we provide, uh, the message that was uh, conveyed to us, basically, to me and my colleague, um, was that we haven't provided enough feedback. So I was like, yeah, definitely, I'm listening, I'm writing it down, I'm thinking like, what can we do about it? And then understanding that, yeah, that's true, we as a company are not yet there. We do put a lot of, well, I actually put a lot of emphasis on feedback, but there are other things that get in the middle and this is not the core part of the values probably, but we will be getting in the direction in the further because it is fucking important, okay? So feedback is critical for one's own development, for understanding whether or not he or she does something in line with the I don't know, values of the society or their life goal, or maybe they're doing some pure shit and then they don't realize it. So the feedback there would be necessary. However, there are a lot, many different ways of giving feedback or soliciting feedback. I mean, you cannot just come to the person and say, here's feedback you would never ask, right? Probably it's not going to be received well <laughs> let's put it this way but there are cases where you can make it happen that a person would be interested in your feedback by starting with along the lines of would you be interested to hear my feedback about this particular situation and that particular phrase could be something a big, a, of a big discomfort for some people. For some people, it would be hard to say just these words to another human being in eye to eye, right? But then again, discomfort is going to be there regardless of whether you want it or not. It's going to stay. It is this fucking strange feeling that not going to go away. It's going to soften up or dumb down over the course of years and the experiences that you get throughout your life and the number of situations that you face while for instance giving feedback 
So yeah, as I said, it's going to be easier over time. Same goes for everything, negotiation, etc. However, the, the point here is that feedback itself um, is fucking critical, right? <laughs> Just remember it. But it is also important to not only give feedback, but also to receive feedback well. For this to happen, first of all, you need to be ready to receive feedback. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. So people who are not ready to receive feedback, they're just going to put up their defense systems. And talking about the psychedelics here, <laughs> a, a slight kind of intro or uh, a, a piece of breadcrumbs here. So from that program at the Berkeley, one of the key aspects about the psychedelics, and I mentioned this in uh, my episode number 22, actually, yeah, about uh, the ego and the uh, defense barriers and everything and this is the feedback that i got through just starting this particular course in psychedelics and it's called psychedelics and mind or something like that but yeah watching people who teach psychedelics since 1989 at berkeley and listening to other experts in the field and professors and whatnot i then realized that fuck i'm not insane and this is beautiful. This is just the feedback for me personally to understand uh, all the theories that, well, not all, <laughs> some that appeared in my mind. They're not like created in only my mind. They are being kind of observed by other people who research this. So I can definitely consider myself in such particular scenario as a sole researcher and explorer and the person who's gathered like shitload of insights whilst conducting with psychedelics and then i see confirmation from the external world that i'm not mental this is like true reality and this is in fact is fucking happening and i'm like this is insane that's why i decided feedback is important topic today so yeah going back to that direction where i was heading with this the idea of feedback is fucking important right but yeah um, you need to be able to receive feedback in order to do something about it. And I've seen numerous of cases where I had to give people feedback and they weren't happy about it. So one thing you definitely need to make sure is when you are receiving feedback, shut the fuck up. Okay? Don't try to explain don't try to reason don't try to defend yourself don't try to do anything just fucking listen what the other person is saying then once the other person said what he she they whatever said second thing you need to do is to say thank you take pause breathe in and then continue but don't defend yourself don't justify don't reason nobody fucking ask you to do it that's the thing about feedback is that it is being perceived by ears and not mouth all right so there's a great saying we got two ears and one mouth for this particular reason so that you listen way more than you talk However, we as human beings, well, there are different theories about that, but we tend to think at the speed of uh, from 700 words per minute to 2,000 words per minute, depending on whom you ask. And we tend to speak with like speed of 150 words a minute on average. However, there are bigger numbers or smaller numbers, depending on the personality, of course, and cultural background, because it affects people. Depending on the region, the people tend to uh, speak either faster or slower. For instance, me, myself, coming from Yekaterinburg, in my hometown, people speak fucking fast, right? When I arrived in Moscow, people spoke like significantly slower, even though the speed of life was significantly faster. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> How does it work? But yeah, I had to kind of take an effort and start speaking slower so that people will be able to understand me properly so yeah communication right and again that's another topic that i can talk about that got yeah i ran some education on well trainings on communication presentation skills negotiation as well but yeah i just don't want to dig there right now in case you have a question but yeah throw it out there 
there. Um, put a question, put a topic, tell me like, what do you want me to dig into? Like share your feedback. Just tell me, yeah, by the way, throw some feedback in there because I lack it. I just produce the content without receiving proper feedback because of, yeah, I mean, algorithms and the fact that I'm not that entertaining or engaging. But yeah, let's put that aside. I definitely need interested to hear from you. So if you've heard to this point, like 20 minutes in, probably you have something to say, say it, please. Okay. So then once you receive feedback, then ideally you can either incorporate it or at least sleep over and think and weigh in and consider whether or not it is something worth taking into account. Well, taking on board, actually, not into account. So first, shut the fuck up, say thank you as a second, third, take your time to process. This is new information, probably you haven't heard of it before, but you all may have heard about it. So if you've heard about it, if it's not a first person who tells you about it, and probably there is something to it, so yeah, I guess it makes sense to do something about it, otherwise if it is something that limits you from achieving whatever the fuck you're planning to achieve or get to where you wanted to go yeah it is definitely something you can do uh, something you can do about yeah well i guess fine so going back to the feedback and the process of receiving feedback so this is important right but yeah giving feedback is also important so in that case that i've went through earlier today when i had to let go a person it was something quite tough for me of course i mean i'm a human being right and i have emotions yeah I'm talking about emotions rough start of a day i had a small of a mental breakdown and my wife gave me some feedback saying that it's not that bad as i think <laughs> it's much better i mean yeah it again those days that you have a tendency to self-doubt and think that everything you've done means nothing and then somebody tells you no you've been this 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 and then you're like yeah you're right <laughs> what the fuck am i saying here but yeah i mean emotions are there you cannot just ignore them you definitely need to process them and i have a lot of emotions recently that i'm processing on the go so going back to the um, level of discomfort and the feedback that i had to give and received actually so we gave feedback about uh, our engagement and about why we made this decision actually i based on feedback solicited from my colleagues about that person so yeah it was my my goal my not goal but my call right and uh i had to deliver the news well it just felt right if i if it's my call i should be the one telling it so the feedback that we received is that we don't provide feedback. Some irony there, right? But yeah, I mean, I mentioned this before, but still. It is fucking interesting because I do love feedback and I'm going to implement this in terms of like our processes. I'm going to rebuild it and integrate it because it is a fundamental part of uh, progress, movement further self-development and in general like heading somewhere and if it's not happening how people are going to grow how organizations are going to grow how companies are going to do business and you know track clients and whatever so this is like intertwined with the topic of research which i think it's time you know for me to make a list of like fucking episodes well oh i do have it no i don't i do have a list of episodes but they don't have topics so i was like mm, episode number fuck i don't remember so yeah something about research probably number 21 or 20 i don't know go there and check it out so um uh, yeah feedback is basic and research is like part of the feedback in a sense from customers if it's like b2b b2c doesn't matter consumers uh whomever you're talking about so feedback is critical again for companies to understand whether or not they're heading in the right direction or maybe they're about to fuck it all up and hit the iceberg so yeah this is like the mental concept of feedback the rest is just uh, up to you how you deal with it but it's fucking critical right so just remember it but again going back to the personal feelings about giving feedback so there's this 
absolutely wonderful book called Radical Candor. I don't remember who's the fucking author. Brilliant lady. Um, she, I don't know, worked at Google or somewhere, but yeah, just Google Radical Candor. And then that book is all about giving feedback while receiving as well, but still making sure that when you say something, it is, first of all, human connection, right? So you provide feedback caring about the feelings of the other party. And there are cases where people could just say you're fired and that's it. Bye. I got a lot of things to do. I don't give a shit about you. So this is one situation when somebody is being let go, right? But there are other situations where you need to provide feedback. So for it to be effective and probably not yeah, relevant for the other person, you definitely need to make sure that you convey that you do take care about the other party. Like you do care about their feelings and you are providing this feedback with the hope and with the goal in mind to make life of such person better in terms of helping him or her overcome I don't know, limitations, barriers or something. And that, that person who wrote that book, she recently was on that podcast, um, what's Masters of Scale. Uh, Reid Hoffman is a co-founder of LinkedIn. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts recently. Just, I don't know, like whenever I find spare time when I'm bre making breakfast or walking the dog and just listening to podcasts. <laughs> I've been listening to so many different topics that, yeah, they just combine and intertwine. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to reference some of them from time to time. So he was talking, uh, yeah, he was uh, hosting an episode and the, the lady, the author of the book, or maybe it was another podcast, but yeah, anyway. So she was on the podcast and uh, making an, an example that when she got a feedback from her boss about her using um and m as every third or sec, well, third word in her presentation, speech or whatever, was for her groundbreaking and shocking because she didn't know about it. And then it was relational. So she was like insanely grateful and thankful to her boss that she was able to tell this feedback to her because she was oblivious of it. And the way she did it was through care. So I don't remember the exact phrase. You can try and find that. In, it was an episode somewhere during the beginning of September, maybe, or in the end of uh or just, you know, drop me a message and I'll try to find it for you. So, yeah, the idea here is that it is fucking important because people don't know about it. And I've been doing, like, I don't know, roughly 50 workshops on negotiations for people of, like, top executives and big multinational companies in different areas, whether it's FEMCG, retail, telecom, and I don't know, you name it, steel producers or whatever. So the people that were sitting at the end of the workshop and receiving feedback, sometimes they were like fucking surprised because they were, again, in the unknown about their personal traits. Sometimes people knew about it, sometimes people don't. And I can tell you about my personal journey in uh, such workshop, a body gap partnership, I think complete skill negotiator, which I partook in 2017 first time. And then I went on to work with the company later on. So yeah, the end of the three and a half day journey i was receiving this feedback from people and then the feedback that i received was not that surprising in many cases and actually one of the pieces of feedback was fundamental for me i was like damn i'm you know pretty pretty damn fucking good but yeah of course there were areas of improvement and one of them is being the emotional or artistic so i'm um, Throwing it out there in the open, <laughs> probably if I am to negotiate with you, you'll probably notice it. But yeah, I mean, you can hear and see probably in the, the way I communicate that it is there. So for me, it was still important to understand that, yeah, it's not just only me. I This is how I am being perceived. This is how other people see me. This is how, you know, they think I am. And for me, yeah, it was just the part that kind of clicked. They're like, yeah, that's what I've been trying to, you know, convey. This is where I get. So this, there's feedback, right? But there are other things, of course, on which I uh, improved on later on, like firmness, for instance. But there are other things 
you know, assertiveness in general. Although I don't remember if it was ever part of the feedback, you can try and find it somewhere there. But yeah, the idea here is that feedback is fucking critical. <laughs> Again, <laughs> it's important. But yeah, going back to the end of the workshop and the people to whom I've been giving the feedback, I don't know, like, like roughly a couple of thousand executives of uh, big multinationals. And in some cases, it was hard to convey the message because the defense systems were there in place and people were very kind of protective about it. But then the entire workshop made them listen more because this is something that's being repeated as of evening one. Yeah, negotiation is listening. All right, so you need to listen carefully, of course. But then, when you give feedback, I could see that some people it was like a revelation because they didn't know. For some, it was acknowledgement that of something that they probably knew or somebody told them before. I mean, they probably not heard it for the first time, at least. And this is amazing, especially when you see that person was not aware of it it means that you do bring value to that person because again wouldn't you be interested to know that you're doing something outrageously bad or maybe there is something that you do or don't do that limits you from achieving something in your life wouldn't you be interested to know it yeah i mean but i bad it's going to be uncomfortable i bet it's going to be weird felt but it can help improve your life so feedback is essential right but again in some companies like ours feedback is not yet there is a what's the same standard operation procedure but it's going to take time for me to implement it and this is one of the things that i'm uh working on because again they went through the change management program at IMD I was like mm, it's time to implement some changes here and there so definitely some um, changes are coming so I think I've wrapped up about feed feedback so let me go to the couple of things to um did they throw the hooks at the beginning of so the first one is the advice from my friend because this is like fucking <laughs> I don't know where to start. So he gave like fantastic advices in terms of how to promote a video on YouTube and some really good tips here and there. I appreciate it a lot. One of the tips was to, you know, make a thumbnail with uh, women with boobs and uh, in bikini and the beach or something like that. Like, mm, that's uh, interesting advice you have there. So the, the kind of awfully funny thing about it and i don't approve of it approach and i do have my values <laughs> because if you've listened carefully to what i've been saying throughout this episode i've said it in the very beginning it it's not in line with my values it goes against everything that i do especially with the project street act is like insane so i'm not going to do it for sure but <laughs> no um the, the idea here is that it fucking works right so this is like I don't know, I, I had this uh, thought that I've shared with a friend of mine yesterday when I was walking to a park with my dog, is that this fucking patriarchal society is self-sustaining. It's like, it, it gives you, it uh, rewards you for sustaining it. So just take an example of a YouTube video where, you know, person uses boobs or women and naked or, you know, half naked buddies or whatever through basically selling sex, you know, in a sense to get um, new views and you're like yeah that's interesting so a person gets like shitload of views hundreds thousands millions and then that person makes money and then the system says that yeah if you do this you get shitload money and you get rich and you're like that's interesting <laughs> but i need to work on breaking those fucking patriarchal patterns so um, it's not my way of thinking so probably it's gonna take a long time for this podcast to take off because of the values that i have in me and well fuck i mean i'll treat it as a hobby that's uh, just gonna sit there and talk and hope that some day somebody gonna appear and resonate with whatever the fuck i'm talking about here but yeah in case you do just throw some crypto to support me and don't forget to throw some comments let me know what exactly do you think okay and share subscribe of course put a like throw one in there 
and yeah just spend some more time with me because i got a lot to talk about so then psychedelic education so the youtube story i think is finished but yeah great devices not gonna put uh, women in thumbnail to get some new um viewers but definitely gonna implement some other changes in terms of how i can uh, talk or portray some things or start a conversation probably well at least i'll do my best right but i'm not gonna be perfect for sure so talking about the psychedelic education and this is something that fucking excites me because i'm gonna do it throughout the weekend probably in one go so berkeley is probably known in the world of education so we is one of the most reputable universities or whatever the fuck it is educational system i don't know how it's called so it's located in california and there's this faculty there's this program which is led by damn I'm, i've closed all the apps so that my uh, pc won't tell me bye bye in the middle of the recording but I'm gonna open Notion and check, um, yeah, historical data there. They've started to copy every piece of information in the hope that at some point in time I'm just gonna go there and open it. And sometimes they do, not all the time, unfortunately. But yeah, at least it's not like fully um, useless, right? So who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Professors? Professors? Yeah, shit, I'm not gonna um, say. But anyway, the, the program is called Psychedelics and the Mind, Berkeley X. And the program is at X. You, you can find it by yourself. So the idea there is that the person who is the head of this program is the starts. The first video, he just starts with love. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I can you can relate to the person. He's happy, you can say, and uh, that you can say that this person consumes a lot of fucking psychedelics. But yeah, uh, Albert Hoffman, inventor of LSD, lived his happy life and died at the age of 108 years. And people who mainly consume psychedelics or the icons of psychedelic movement out there, they tend to live long years. <laughs> I don't know why. Probably because they find life interesting and curious and because the psychedelics help them do this. But yeah, anyway. So the thing that I wanted to say to you here is that I started to watch first videos and I was sitting there and I, I mentioned this before during this recording that this insight came to me that fuck I'm not the only one I'm not alone in my thoughts I had all these thoughts in me I had well not all of course but sure I mean the some of them they do resonate and some of the conclusions that they started with were there in me and I was like fuck this is amazing so in probably it was the first video they just immediately started to talk about the, well, the divine nature of the psychedelic, but the uh, concept that resonated like right away is that this global unconsciousness. And I was like, fuck. So you are like seriously studying this, studying and teaching ever since 1989. And this is the information that I kind of, came to by myself being in fucking russia without the access to that knowledge and knowing all this this is like insane so there is a potential that can be used for like the entire global good if you can put it this way or just like moving humankind forward and the access to that knowledge is first of all critical for destigmatizing the nature of the sub such substances because it's critical it, i mean i couldn't imagine myself talking about psychedelics in the open 20 years ago like 10 years ago even now i can because i i see that it is being normalized same as with like women periods or any other aspect sex education is fucking critical and important but yeah that's insane so I'm going to bring some the knowledge and share it with you, like bits here and there. But here I'm going to stop and go and celebrate my birthday together with my wife by eating a nice steak. Yeah, I do eat meat from time to time. Not perfect. Yeah, thanks again for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and throw in some crypto. So yeah, thank you. Uh, throw comments, please. I need some feedback. Don't forget, feedback is a gift.